Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Ever since I backed the Indiegogo campaign of OmniCharge for this Omni 20, I've been really happy with it. It's an excellent 20,000 milliamp power bank, and it comes with a lot of features, such as this OLED screen. You can turn off the ports individually, it has Quick Charge 3.0, but it also has a DC out with a 0.1 granular voltage you can set, and even an AC out up to 100 watts. So in the field, this thing has been awesome, and I've had a lots of various uses for it, powering all kinds of stuff while on the go. But it's a bit big, but it's 20,000 milliamp, so that's forgiven, but you don't really always need all these features. And with all these features, especially AC and stuff like that, and OLED screens, it is a bit expensive. It's an excellent device, but it's not cheap. And if you mostly have USB power devices, well, I can understand going for a cheaper model than this. So for that, OmniCharge launched a new Indiegogo campaign uh, a few months back, and they called it their OmniCharge mobile line. So these are, well, not so much stripped down versions, but for a different use than their Omni 20. And well, they decided to start with four models in their Omni charged mobile line. That is a 3200 milliamp hour and a 9600 milliamp hour. And together with that, they came with the 2800, 28,000, no, wait, wait, 20,800 model and the 25, 25,600 model. Now, this is a bit too much to cram into one video. So this video is going to be about these two models, which are mostly phone oriented. And then these two bigger ones, well, they require a bit more tests because they do have more features and more capacity. So I'll make a separate video about these in the future. Once that is done, um, Somewhere up here, there should be a link and you can click that and go immediately to that review. Okay. So first up the 3200 and the 9600 and well, let's take a look at them. So this tiny little thing is the 3200 model. This 3200 stands for 3200 milliamp hours. And this isn't just an unboxing video. I'm actually going to test these and see which features it supports on the USB port and what kind of power we can actually draw from it. But more about that in a little bit. So first we need to talk about that 3200 hours. Always when a battery value is stated, either it's a phone or a power bank or whatever, that's done at the battery's voltage. So while a USB port generally is 5 volt, the battery generally is 3.6 or 3.7 volt, depending on the chemistry they used. Inside of these is a 3.6 volt battery. After you do the math and down convert the 3200 milliamp hours from 3.6 volts to 5, you get about 2300 milliamp hours. But the equation doesn't stop there, because the voltage has, has to be actually boosted. Now, normal power banks or bigger power banks have multiple batteries, so then the voltage can be brought down instead of up. And up converting voltage, boost converting it, uh, well, it's just less efficient than down converting it or buck converting it. So I would say this will have about a 20% loss, where a good, excellent power bank will have about a 10% loss. But if you want something that is, well, this small, and I'll, I'll be showing you some B-roll shots, um, you can't really get around that. So I'd say if this is a very good power bank, it'll have about 20% loss. So looking at all the numbers, we should end up around 1800 milliamp hours of effective capacity at five volts. I used my uh, trusty EBD USB to set up a one amp current draw and see how long it lasted. And then it automatically calculates what the actual power was in the battery. And if we look at that, we see that it achieved a value of 1858 milliamp hours. And that is very close to around the 1840 that I calculated. 
So that's perfect. The EBD USB also calculates watt hours for me, and that's voltage independent, and it got about 9.1 watt hours. Checking that value on the website, we see that's actually exactly what this little thing is rated for. So unlike some Chinese batteries, this one delivers exactly the power they say it will deliver you. And well, depending on what kind of phone you have, that's going to be about 75% of a full charge. So if you're in a pinch, that will work fine. Taking another look at that graph, we see that the voltage this thing put out was perfectly flat. Now, this isn't something I see on most power banks, especially Chinese regulators. They will drop voltage over time as the battery decreases in voltage. But the regulator in this thing is an absolute champ. It never deviated, it never fluctuated. It's just perfect. Perfect output the whole time until it died and was empty. Excellent. So let's take a quick look with one of my other USB power meters at what input and output standards this power bank supports. First, a quick note, this power bank is very convenient because it comes with the charging cable actually inside of the power bank itself. Now this is a USB-C version, but you can also get an included uh, lightning cable if you have an Apple device. So basically that means this is a self-contained unit. You don't need to keep any cables. So if you want to keep this in a backpack or a bag or even your wife's or girlfriend's purse, it's basically lipstick sized and it has the cable right inside of it. So you just take it out, plug it in and it starts charging. That's awesome. And it gets even better if the power bank is empty. Oops, you can, if I do it correctly, which I'm not doing, ah, there we go. You can pull out the power cable and you can actually use a longer cable inside there because it's just a normal USB port, or you can use the cable to plug into the charge in port and then plug this into your phone charger or a random USB port you encounter and fill it up again. So standards it supports, uh, I tested it with a meter as I said, and I'll be showing you some B-roll. Output and input is five volt only and it supports up to two amps in and out normal standard. So no quick charging or USB power delivery, etc. But the main selling point for this power bank is if you need it, you'd likely have it with you because it's so small. So quick conclusion here, if you need something for emergency power and you want to put it in your backpack or your laptop case or your wife's purse or girlfriend's purse or whatever, this is an excellent device to have. It holds a pretty good charge. As I said, it'll charge a, a generic phone to about 75%, but in a pinch, this will certainly work and I can only highly recommend it. And well, having said that, it's kind of sad this review is over because my girlfriend saw this thing and well, I know where it's going after this review. It's going straight into her bag and I'll never see it again. But well, I guess that kind of speaks for itself for how well this thing is built and how nice the form factor is. So yeah. Okay, let's uh, move on to its bigger brother and that's the 9600. Before I do that, you'll see me using some USB cables in this video and I haven't made a USB cable review video in a while, but if you are looking for a great USB cable, you should really look at one, I'm gonna, look at the brand here that's called Besus. I'll have all these linked including the power meters and of course the power banks in the description if you want to take a look at those uh, but these Besus cables they are excellent. I did some tests behind the screens I might make a video about that in the future but they come in some nice colors but that's just secondary they have very good cabling inside high copper amounts they're well built they have strain reliefs and I have no doubt these are going to last you a very long time. And these can also handle up to like 60, 65 watts if you're using it with a laptop or with one of those high power phones that you can charge. Excellent. If you need a cable, check the description for these Besus cables. And well, I just can't praise them enough. But this video is about power banks. So let's get back to that. 
This is the 9600 variant, and this one has some more features than the smaller one. So, let's take a look at those. First, let's calculate the capacity. I won't bore you with the same math again, but basically, using a 10% loss this time, this power bank should land between 62 and 6300 milliamp hours at 5 volts. Well, here's the graph again, and it got 6220, which is excellent, and that also means this indeed has a better conversion rate, and 10%, as I said, is rated among the best power banks you can buy. Looking at the 31.5 watt hours, we see again that this perfectly aligns with what OmniCharge states on their website, so this thing is performing exactly as specified. Nice. So this thing is performing very well in regards to capacity, and if we look at the voltage graph again in the, in the test I did, well, there's just nothing you can say about that. It's a flat line. Again, perfect regulation, and really, really excellent for a power bank. So, this power bank comes with a bit more features. The USB-A port in this one is Quick Charge 3 certified, and not only that, it uh, actually supports quite a few standards. I'll uh, show you some B-roll closer up. So, it doesn't support USB power delivery on the USB-A port, but it supports Quick Charge 2 and 3.0 at all values up to 12 volt. But it also supports Apple's 5 volt standard up to 2.4 amps, Samsung's AFC up to 9 amps, and FCP, which Huawei phones use with 5 volt and 9 volts. And then last, it also supports MTK PA 1.1 and PA 2, which is a MediaTek's uh, proprietary standard which stands against quick charge and well basically the USB A port supports everything except USB power delivery. But if we then test the USB C port, this time it's not only a charging input but it's also an output port and it supports uh, USB power delivery, everything from 5, 9 and 12 volt up to 1.5 amps. So basically, whatever device or phone you have and whatever standard it supports, most likely this power bank will be able to charge your device at its optimum speed, which is again, excellent. I tested it with various, various devices and well, my, my most uh, elaborate power meters and stuff like that. And I was able to trigger all the different charging standards and those all worked perfectly. So, Next to the bigger capacity, if you want a faster charge, this might be the power bank for you. So output-wise, it supports almost anything. Input-wise, it supports USB power delivery. So if you have a USB PD for, for instance, your laptop or your phone or charger or whatever, it can also fast charge at 9 and 12 volts. Again, filling it up rapidly so you won't be left without for very long. And well, my conclusion about this one is kind of the same as this one. These are excellent power banks. They have perfect regulation. This one supports almost all charging standards on the planet. And they have their rated capacity. They're nice and uh, rugged and, and a good form factor. I don't know what to say about those. But it's, they, yeah, I like them. Their, their, their construction is uh, very strong and... and very good. So yeah, I can only highly recommend them. Do they have any downsides? Well, I've spent the last week with these two and I'm still testing the higher capacity ones. But from these, they have behaved, again, excellently. There's very little bad I can say about them. The only thing I could say is that their power management, so their auto turnoff feature that they have, is a bit aggressive. So if you have a uh, very low power draw device, it might turn off on you uh, instead of turn on. So for those type of applications, like drawing over only 0 0.2 or 0.3 watts, they might automatically turn off. But anything else, that basically leaves me with one thing to say. Are you looking for a power bank for your phone for a, a slight top up or being able to charge your phone two, three times? look no further and buy some of these OmniCharge mobile power banks. They are excellent, they are easily higher quality, especially in power regulation and supported standards for this one than your Chinese counterparts, 
And, well, they're uh, a bit cheaper than this behemoth, but this still, in its own league, is a very good device. These are just a lot cheaper, and for the people who are looking for a simpler power bank, well, I can't recommend them highly enough. I've never seen anything this well behaved. So, yeah. As said, I will have links to everything I used in this video, including my uh, my USB testers, and uh, if you want to test these things yourself or see, especially this one, if you want to see which uh, modes a certain charger supports or how fast it's charging, etc. This one's very nice, but uh, I also I can make recommend all of them actually. And again, cables, these cables are the best cables I've worked with in years, and they're not very expensive. So I'll have links for everything down in the description. Thank you for watching, and maybe subscribe to see how the larger power banks fare. Those again have more features and a lot larger capacity, so take longer to test. And well, I hope to see you guys back in that video. Bye bye.